rock around the ring. I am Kid Cadet, joined always by the extra spooky Miss Sweet D, Danica Janelle. How you doing? We're pretty good. Okay, we have been better. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I'm well, <laughs> great. <laughs> Do you want to bring out their first guest? Sure, let's bring out our first guest. You've seen him before. You love him, and he loves Wham. Let's give it up for Matt Riley. <laughs> Hello. I do love Wham. <laughs> There's one thing. Yeah. That's all you need to know. So, <laughs> How are well, you doing? Really fantastic. good. Fantastic, yeah. Cool. D Danica is in Vegas. Danica, do you mind sharing why you're in Vegas? Is this something we're sharing? Oh, sure. So now that most of the world knows, um, so we came here, unfortunately, for at first a negative reason was my father-in-law passed away. Um, but on the plus side, I got married. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we're, uh, we were engaged for uh, to be married in May. And we're still doing the full celebration and everything, but yeah. we're like, you know what? Why not? That's awesome. That's what Vegas yeah. is for, right? That's true. <laughs> Gambling and getting married. And yeah. of course, we did it in a, a theater because we're both nice. in theater and we're huge nerds. So, well, that's yeah. awesome. And yeah. speaking of theater, we have to bring out our Aunt Peggy. <laughs> he is the one and only Steve Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, what's up, Steve? Hi. <laughs> We're, we're, we're great. How are you doing, Steve? Great. I'm in uh, New York uh, in a hotel room, uh, but having a great night nonetheless. And I'm excited to talk to you guys. Congratulations. Holy cow. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> it's really cool. So now this is just an extended celebration. We're so excited we get to celebrate Danica's marriage Woo. with you guys and also spooky season with you guys. Yeah. And I, yes. And so <laughs> just, just to get started. So Steve, the last time we had you on the stream, I believe you were finishing uh, shooting the current season of Ooh. Ghost Nation. And so the season just premiered, what was it on Saturday? So not too long ago. So what can you tell us about the rest of the upcoming season without giving away too many spoilers? Sure, thanks for reminding me because I probably <laughs> will know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we actually have a, a lot of, you know, the episode that premiered on Saturday uh, was a, the first one we were able to film uh, before uh, the quarantine really happened. We filmed that in early March. Uh, and uh, we thought we would, you know, be back shortly or whatever. But then all of a sudden, we were down until about June or so, July even, end of July. Uh, so the ones coming up from this point forward are all filmed during this quarantine. Uh, but we have a lot of fun stuff, a few uh, uh, surprises. Uh, we have some new equipment. Uh, we have a reunion on uh, Halloween night with some friends of ours, uh, Amy Bruni and uh, Adam Berry. Uh, that'll be on Halloween. So yeah, lots of fun stuff coming up. Uh, I didn't get married though. <laughs> well, can't be all of us. <laughs> Next year. So awesome. Back to it. Very very cool. So and Maddie, actually, you are working on your debut album. Is that right? Are we allowed to talk uh, about this, Matt? Oh yeah, we can talk about some stuff. Yeah, I started cool. doing some. Uh, yeah, I've been well. I've been doing a lot of just with what's going on with the industry, right? It's there's no live shows, there's nothing going on like that. So, um, I was doing a lot of remote work for well, all kinds of people. It's great. I worked with my buddy Luke in Australia, um, so across the world, I was tracking some bass for his record. Um, grave mistake, the band I was working with last time doing their EP, but we started working on some new songs too, uh, remotely. So I invested in all this like remote, really high end recording gear and everything. So when I was testing it out, I'm like, hey. I'm gonna use this for myself. So yeah, um, been real active in like the songwriting aspect of music and just kind of working on my own stuff in addition to working on everyone else's uh, productions and stuff too. But um, something I had not planned at all for this year and here we are <laughs> just because of what's been going on. So yeah, cool. just, you know, waiting for tours and stuff to, to happen again and then I'll be back on, on that side of the industry, but not for now. <laughs> is there any talks or anything, Matt, about when we think something like that could happen? Or is it, do, do you think it's so up in the air that? Um, well, right now, like if you check out like Avril's site and everything, you know, the, the tour dates have been, you know, rescheduled for next year, early next year for Europe and Asia. Um, it's just a matter of hoping that everything works out 
And um, I mean, we were supposed to tour earlier this year and it got pushed off for early next year. So, and we're still kind of keeping our fingers crossed and everything. So I don't even know. It's just kind of keeping an eye on the news and just hoping that it eventually breaks and we can all go back to work, <laughs> you know? Very fair. So everyone wear a mask so you can see your favorite bands play next year. That's this is, this is yes. it. <laughs> Live events are important for the economy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into some spooky Halloween stuff since it is a very appropriate to, oh yes, we've all got our wonderful <laughs> things around. Now, can you hold up your um, your little cup again? Oh, my succulent? Hold on. That yeah. falls. Well, there he is. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> and Maddie's got a little, got your little pumpkin cup. I yeah. do. Actually, I've got two of them. Like, and I can't go, I've got two cups. Oh, wow. I'm drinking two coffees. <laughs> there you go. And Steve has his black curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> ominous. <tonight. laughs> and you're also dressed all in black, which, you know, we always appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> So let's jump into some of the spooky Halloween stuff we wanted to talk to you guys about. So Ooh. do you each remember maybe your, what, or, or I guess better question, what is the first Halloween costume you remember wearing as a child? Ooh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> hmm. I remember being Dracula. I remember that a long time ago. Maybe I was five, maybe. Ooh. Nice. But yeah, and like little widow's peak. Uh, I was a long hair Dracula, you know. <laughs> oh, I think I remember, what was it? I remember I was a pirate when I was young. And I remember also maybe like Frankenstein with like the the makeup, you know, the green, you know, face makeup, all that stuff doing that when I was like five or six. So um, that's a really tough question. I do remember all the crazy costumes though with like the hard plastic and the rubber bands behind it. Oh, and it those pulls awful. your hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I well, plenty we, of those. We have you know? Dracula and Frankenstein's monsters, so we're getting all the universal monsters back together, apparently. So perfect. <laughs> I'll be the creature. Ooh. Excellent. <laughs> I'll be Wolfman, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> the Wolfman love. So, so which I guess leads into the next question of do you have you dressed up as adults? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think oh, of man. not in a long time. I probably should, I... Start, but I always work on Halloween usually. Yeah. So, uh, or uh, I get candy out to little kids. Oh yeah, you're yeah. you're working on Halloween. Let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, oh wow, I've done all kinds of stuff as an adult. Let's see, I did like Gene Simmons one year, full like you know, kiss makeup. <laughs> I've been like a <laughs> Ghostbuster. I've done Michael Myers, of course. You know, full full on. Uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. I feel like I've dressed up more as an adult than I did as a kid for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Right. S same with Danica yeah. and I, but I, I think oh, our yeah. best costume, Danica, was when we were itchy and scratchy from The Simpsons. Probably. Ooh, that's uh, it's one. one of the best ones we've done. Yeah. yeah. We're so creative. All right. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> things are a little bit different this year. <laughs> Duh. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you could spend this time of the year, the spooky season, Halloween, anywhere in the world, where would you most like to spend it? Wow. That's a good question. That's a super good question. My brain wants to say Disney World, you know, just because that's where I always like and where, you know, their, their decorations this time of year are amazing. Mm -hmm. But Mickey's Not So Scary has been postponed naturally, so... Uh, I have to be somewhere in the fall weather, maybe Sleepy Hollow. It's really pretty this time of year. Like it maybe, maybe Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, Ooh. guys. Yeah. I'm trying to Matt. think. Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, anywhere in the world to spend Halloween? Um, I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> You know where I've always wanted to go was like, it's probably so cliche, but I haven't done it, but I've never been to like Salem, Massachusetts area. Yeah. And I know everyone always mentions that, but I've heard that around Halloween time. It's just like, forget it, don't go. Cause it's just, everyone goes there for uh, for Halloween. But I think that would be pretty cool. I haven't I haven't done it yet. I would love to check out the the sites there. Salem's awesome. This time of year, you, you'd like it. Yeah. yeah, I've heard it's just so packed. Everyone, everyone wants to see it. It can be, but I've been on Halloween a few times, even recently, and uh, it hasn't been too bad. I think you'd take oh, it. Oh, cool. Yeah, the cool. city right now is like 
Get out of here. <laughs> what <do> you <laughs> leave now? Well, maybe next year. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Next year. I love that. Next year. Yeah. We'll all celebrate in Salem. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Yes. Oh, Jane says Sleepy Hollow is awesome. Steve, my friend and I did an investigation in the cemetery there. That's cool. In a great uh, cemetery. That's cool. Well, hmm. I mean, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, I hope you got permission, Jane. <laughs> I think we sorry, Jane. We just uh, we just added you. <laughs> yeah, a little finger shake. <laughs> well, the next question is music themed because obviously both of you also being musicians, um, we have to ask: What is your favorite Halloween themed song? Ooh. And Matt, I'll tell you this much. I Googled if Wham had a Halloween theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Do they? Yeah, George Michael let me down on that one for sure. But, uh, <laughs> Michael? I know, I know. Um, wow. Can it, can it got... be something that's a little uh, broader, like it oh, not yeah. Halloween, but more popular in Halloween? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Quite There's... There's no wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was. I was nervous now. Um, <laughs> let me think. That's a really good question. Um, I'd say uh, Grim Grinning Ghosts, probably. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking more like a uh, horror movie soundtrack type thing. And uh, yeah, it's a toss up like between. Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. Mm -hmm. Those are my two like favorite horror themes. Yeah. So it's a 50 50. It's a toss up. Either of those. Okay. So always go towards John Carpenter. Always go towards John Carpenter. <laughs> okay, so it has to be Halloween. <laughs> there we go. We rolled it out. Perfect. That was easy. Done. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Danica, what about you? Oh, no. I have to answer. I have. Uh... You usually don't make me do this. No, oh God. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, I'll say mine. Yeah. I love Werewolves in London from Warren Zemon. Oh. It just, oh. because it's so happy and I love werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Monster Mash, of course, is a classic. So that's that's way up my list. But True. Mm -hmm. I feel like, is that like the only official Halloween song? No, like, there's got to be purple people I mean, eaters. Oh, and you know what? There we go. The one from is it thriller. Um, thriller's thriller, good. Yeah. Is that a yeah. Halloween song though? This is Halloween, maybe a little bit. It's getting there. Oh, oh there we go. Mm -hmm. so there are. That's sorry, I, there are wrong answers, and I and I just. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment here. All right, so kind of kind of a follow up to this. So if you have the opportunity to cover. A Halloween song or a spooky song, what song would you by yourself or with the band want to get the opportunity to cover? Hmm. Wow. Actually, this is funny. Maybe like, oh wow, this is many years ago, but I actually did a cover of Monster Mash and it got like a decent amount of buzz and everything. It was funny. I just saw it. It was in like a music write up this year, like you top 10 Monster Mash covers of all time. And I was between like the Misfits and like one other like big band. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Oh. But I just took it off recently because I was like, this is from like seven years ago. So no one wants to hear it. So that's not even online anymore. Uh, um, well. So I have to come up with a new answer. <laughs> <laughs> or put it back online. Uh, mm -hmm. I, or just re-record it. There we go. There's yeah. my answer. I'll re-record Monster Mash. There you go. That's Batman. my official answer. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steve? Oh, uh, I would um, maybe the uh, is it called Dead Man's Dance from uh, Oingo Boingo? Uh, De yeah, Dead Man's Party. Yeah. Wait. De yes. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Party. Uh, I have to say maybe that it's such a fun song, pretty upbeat, and it's about you know, and it's pretty much a Halloween song. And I Oingo think. Boingo is uh, Elfman, right? That's right, Danny Dan Elfman. Elfman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boingo Boingo, like now they're talking yeah. about music again, they really put me in the Halloween spirit. I love that yeah. song so much. How do we make this happen? Oh, man. Dead Let's man's do it. I, I'm Let's all collaborate all these... and do a version of it. I'm available. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm very we all are. Musicians are. Musicians yeah. aren't doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. yeah, I'm just begging yeah. for work. Come on, please. 
yeah. Yeah. Batman's party. Here comes the boogeyman from Jeepers Creepers. Mm-hmm. This is Halloween. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are oh witch doctor from Alvin witch and the Doctor. That's oh, good. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, the Ramones Pet Cemetery. That's a good one, Mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm, look at these. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All the people that are watching this know so much more than I do. <laughs> like, oh, no. Or they just have really good taste. So, yeah. All right, Dan, what's next? So, uh, do you have any Halloween traditions? Hmm. That's a good one again. Whoa. That's a good one. <laughs> when I was a kid, I did for sure. Um, but I think now I just try to make sure I, I watch, you know, uh, it's the Great Pumpkin, uh, and mm-hmm. I watch uh, Halloween Tree. Make sure I, you know, get all of those in, and if I can, I take my nephews uh, to get some candy. Nice and I get candy on myself. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the real answer. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny on Halloween. I've never been like the the party type on Halloween, so I've never done like the Halloween parties and all that stuff. I've always just been more like you know, scary movies. Go out especially in Burbank like in California like a lot of the film industry people work there and they do elaborate setups for their outdoor haunted attractions they even have like walkthrough attractions and all this stuff like literally the same quality as like universal horror nights and stuff like that yeah. so that's always super fun I, I always kind of make it more of like a horror night tons of movies go out check out all the scary stuff and that's about it you know do, do they ever show movies at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery around that time? Because that's probably they, so much they fun. They do. Yes, they do. They they do all kinds of stuff like that and everything. Like, it's really cool. That was actually my favorite part of, like, moving out to that part of California. It's, like, it's super horror-based. And they do all kinds of cool stuff like that. Like, movies in the cemeteries and all the horror shops in the area. And everyone in the film industry doing all their kinds of crazy special effects work just in their front yard. Like, super cool time to be, uh, to be around uh, Burbank. That's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. and speaking of, like, tradition, so Danica, when we used to live in, like, the same city, we used to always carve pumpkins together. Not necessarily very well, but we, we would I, attempt I it. I will say, I did, I'm very proud of this one still, a really good Darth Vader, Vader. mask. Yeah, Ooh. it was pretty good. So if, if you guys were able to, to sit down and carve a pumpkin right now, what would you carve into a pumpkin? <laughs> I'd go well over my talent level and try to do the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, just what I'm feeling yeah. right now. Yeah, it's just what I'm feeling. <laughs> oh, stencil or would you? Freehand? I'd probably do, you know, yeah, stencil. I don't know. Maybe just freehand it, look at it, and see what I can do. Try to, I don't know. I don't even know why I came up with that answer. That was just so over the top. <laughs> Universal monsters, man. We love it. It's them. always, always going to be the answer, you know. And Riku Browning, who was the original uh, creature, is the last living Universal monster. Nice. That's nice. That's nice. Still around with us. It's true. You know, for me, I would probably just do a scary, scary face, like a scary jack o' lantern with the crazy mouth and all that stuff. That's what I did when I was a kid, and what I still do when I carve a jack o' lantern. Just scary face. Same. (laughs) <laughs> so we're getting into a very controversial subject here but i have to ask what are your feelings on candy corn <laughs> it's a very important question like it's all right i don't <laughs> it's not the worst thing like i don't see candy corn i'm like oh i just i can't do it i hate it it, it's fine. I'll eat it, I guess. <laughs> that's okay. that's how I feel about it, you know. I am. Um, I, I don't think they're good, you know. Uh, <laughs> I like to look at them. They're really pretty. They're nostalgic. Mm-hmm. I may buy a bag and put it in the house this time of year, you know, just to, to look look at it. And I have a lot uh, tattooed on me. Pieces you of do? Uh, <laughs> Uh, candy corn and, and different, <laughs> uh, different spots, just because it's very Halloween and fall and that sort of thing. But yeah. flavor, <laughs> I, it's, it doesn't taste like candy or corn. I don't quite understand. What's <laughs> well, I think because when you put all the pieces together, it actually looks like an ear of corn, right? Is that why it's called that? So I know it used to be called chicken. Oh, really? Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. 
as a trivia host, I like host a <laughs> trivia game every year, and we got chicken feed. So there you go. I'm gonna get everyone. Fun, fun fact. Okay, so our our, 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 next, question, candy. <laughs> our next question for you, Matt. Um, mm -hmm. Matt, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Uh, yes. It's funny when it comes to paranormal stuff. You know, actually. Steve, you've mentioned this on your show and stuff, and it's the kind of like the the thing where it's like as you grow up, you kind of just like you just learn how to, you know, rule it out or whatever and stuff like that. So anything I've kind of had, you kind of just like, oh, it couldn't have been blah, blah, blah. But um, there was one. It was last year. It was crazy. It was there's a place in Burbank called the Mystic Museum. Uh, it's super cool. It's like an oddities shop and everything. Uh uh, before I went on tour with Avril and joined her band, I was like really close with that shop. I would be there like five times a week. I would work there part time, do all kinds of cool stuff there. And there was a party there one time. Uh, so the owners and I were in the front room. The party was in the back. It was like a very spooky Halloween type themed party. And when we were hanging out at the time, I still had like the spiky hair, but it was like pink and everything. And it was four of us chilling. And one of my spikes just got like pulled like super hard it was funny and i i turned around because i'm always kind of like if i'm in a room with like three or four other people usually i'm the one getting the pranks turned on me and stuff like that you know so i turned around like okay who pulled my hair and there was no one there and it it was so funny because for like 45 minutes i was just like okay was it you come on be serious come on and i just couldn't believe it and everyone was telling me like no there's nothing 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 then it turned out that apparently there's like a little girl spirit at this store that likes to play games and stuff and they were saying, oh, you know, kind of like a lot of people, they see your hair, they're attracted to it. So the spirit maybe was like, yeah, you got cool hair and gave it a tug. <laughs> but yeah, that was probably the most clear one that I, because it was so obvious that it pulled and it, I turned around like, because I knew someone was there and I laughed and I was just like, okay, what, who's doing this? And there was no one there. And I watched the video security camera and everything. Cause I was just, I was so convinced that there was someone there. That was like the only time that I was like, I don't know how to explain that one. I've had others that maybe I could like, oh, maybe it was this or that, but that was like so clear as day. That was wild. Wow. How interesting. Yeah, that was about That's a year cool. ago. Was it on the footage when you watched the security? Did there was the footage yeah. of kind of just me being like, hey, who was there? So, but yeah, there was nothing that really showed up that was like, you know, a mist or a figure or anything. But yeah, that was, that was weird. And I know that store in particular has all kinds of oddities and, you know, stuff from hundreds of years ago and stuff, big collection of, you know, occult stuff and everything. So they've had all kinds of stories and I just kind of like the vibe of hanging out there, but that was the first and only time that something happened to me there. It was really cool. So yeah. Steve, have you heard something like that before where you find that like paranormal like things or entities are attracted to certain like colors? Like could something like a certain color, like they like the color pink or is, is that a strange question to ask? Um. I don't know. That's not a strange question at all. I um, I think that uh, if they liked the color blue or pink when they were alive, why wouldn't they now? You know, if conscious thought and decision travels with you, I feel like I would still be attracted to things that I liked when I was alive. You know, um, so I, I maybe it was fat. Maybe he'd never quite seen hair like that. Who knows? Like what? what yeah. Yeah, you know, I've seen this before. Well, you, you really never know what or or why. Um, but, but I've been to the, the Mystic uh, Museum there. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, super cool place. Uh, I've been to the when they do the slashback video also. That's uh, right, yep. Yeah, I've been there to check that out. Um, That's awesome. The owners couldn't be any nicer, nicest people ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right, they have a ton of stuff there. And, and if I'm not mistaken, they, they do come across the occasional haunted, you know, item and, and they uh, not invite, uh, but they do have evenings with like a psychic or, or, or that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So that's it great. is a place that's inviting to that sort of activity. So you, you never know. You really don't. You, you may have had yeah. something happen there. Uh, maybe not. But <laughs> right. <laughs> Who knows? But it, it does have a cool vibe there, whatever it is. It's just because they have all that stuff and that, that atmosphere of, you know, welcoming that it has a you know, I've never felt any negative energy, but it definitely has something when you walk in, it's just like, Ooh, this, this place has something cool about it. And I just loved going there. I'd be there working past hours at like 
you know, 1 a.m. and stuff, just me and one other person. And it just felt really cool. <laughs> it, was, it was a cool vibe. Yeah, it's beautiful, too. It's yeah. Like, yeah, so it's uh, parts of it is more like a gallery, you know, but of like you said, oddities and and mm -hmm. and if they have because they have things in there, you know, when I was there, they had uh, some medical type kits and, and some things that you know somebody could have some sort of emotional attachment to. So if they acquire an item like that, and it has something attached to them uh, or to it rather. You never know. You know, it could yeah. influence the environment in such a way where things are happening. Uh, so there's also the chance that they've acquired items, you know, over the length of their shop there and uh, could have had some things attached to it. And maybe that day one of those things, you know, was intrigued by you for, for whatever. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, it's, that was like my only like, yep, that happened and I can't explain it. <laughs> it was fun. Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was that was a good time. So I'm going to switch gears on you guys just a little bit um, because it's still sort of in the in the spooky realm, I guess. And ask, um, <laughs> what unsolved murder most fascinates you? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow! I have to ask because I'm a huge you know true crime fan. Yeah. And <laughs> hmm. That's a. You know, the one, and it's kind of cliche a little bit, but for me, I, I would say almost uh, Kennedy, you know, mm. that magic bullet. That's a pretty intense story. You know, the most experts and, and upwards of 90 percent do believe there is more than one shooter. You yeah. know, all of that, it's pretty dang intriguing. So I'd say I consider that an unsolved you know, murder. That was a murder. You know, oh, yeah. I'd say, yeah, yeah, that definitely qualifies. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. that, hmm, that's a good one. Um, for me, it's funny. I kind of like the really old, you know, like Jack the Ripper. You know, kind of like really just kind of. I mean, because especially growing up, that's just a name and a story that you've heard your whole life. So for me, it's always fascinated me. Something that's like you know so in popular culture and folklore and everything. So that's always been one for me. That's like, Ooh, how did this happen? What happened here? And all that, you know, the way they would write it in the papers and everything. I love reading all the old stories and stuff and the, the articles and all that. So for me, it's more of like the really old stuff that, that still gets me. I'm not really into the super true crime stuff. I know it's so popular, but I, I haven't really watched a lot of those. <laughs> you know, the, I know there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of them, you know, I have to get more into it. My mom is saying the murder of John Binet. That is, mm. yeah, that's mm. ooh, spooky. All right. Yeah, my theory. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So, how about this? So, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, because let's just say the year isn't over quite yet, anything could happen next month. What would be <laughs> next week? Yeah, right. What would be your weapon of choice in a zombie apocalypse? Hmm. Good question. Wow. Hey. If I remember correctly, Steve, you had like a certain, what was it a knife or an axe or something? I'm trying to remember what weapon you had. Yeah, I, I would, I would a sword. go to a sword. A sword. Yeah, a sword. Yeah. Not, you know, not necessarily because of Michonne or, or anything like that, but not, not because of her. But uh, I think, it was, you know, it's an old sort of horror movie trope in regards that, you know, knives don't need reloading and that sort of thing. You know, a sword doesn't need reloading. So with that, you can just go, you know, bonkers. But <laughs> if I'm at a distance, machine gun all day. Hmm. Well, there you go. You just went right for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I was thinking sword too, but I don't know if I'm strong enough to, I'd, I'd hit him and it wouldn't even go through. It'd be like, oh, sorry, man. Like, you Adrenaline, know. Maddie. You have to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I guess it's one of those things where you don't know how you'd handle a zombie apocalypse until you're in it. So maybe by next week, I'll find out if 2020 keeps going the way it does. But um, right. <laughs> sword was. OK, so if adrenaline and everything. Yeah, I think sword, too, would probably be the my my choice weapon from a distance, though. I'm thinking I'd want to go like bow and arrow or like crossbow. That'd be yeah, more of my distance there weapon. weapon. There you go. Yeah. I, I like Jules' answer. They said the thermos and Hubie Halloween. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have gotten the opportunity to see this film, but if you like Adam Sandler, that's all I'm gonna say. It is, it is so Adam Sandler. 
I would say for my weapon, my nails. I'll just oh. like attack. Ah, attack. All right. Wow. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Danica, I saw what? someone say chainsaw. I was gonna say chainsaw, but it's probably too loud for a zombie apocalypse. That's why I didn't. Yeah. What? Well, I mean, yeah. Only... The only issue with that is gas. Yeah, and gas too. So mm -hmm. it'd be cool yeah. for like the first three hours of the apocalypse. That'd be great. Yeah. So I have to go with like a nice sharp saber. Really, you nice. gotta make sure it's real nice and sharp. But I like your I like your crossbow idea too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. What can I say? I've been thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of time to think about. This. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, musicians are out of work, you know. Yeah. So, Steve, we we may have asked you this before, Steve, but uh, we wanted to kind of redo and see if maybe things have changed at all. But um, are there anything that you all are superstitious about? Hmm. You know, there. I won't do some of the, you know, typical things of, of superstition where you know i'm not going to walk under a ladder that sort of thing but i can't tell if because it's that there's an actual danger that i could elbow the thing and knock the guy off it or something or if i just won't do it you know because it's superstition um i also won't take anything unless it's given to me as a an expressed gift or i'm allowed to purchase it yeah. from any place i, I visit you, you know uh there could be some superstition in that. I also, any human skulls I have, I won't give them names. I feel like they had names at one point. Or some people name theirs, you, you know. I like that, that's just out of respect, yeah. No, it's just like, they had a name, you know. <laughs> <They're reading. laughs> it's okay, this one is very clearly made of plastic, so I'm naming him Doric. Perfect. <laughs> But I would say that's a superstition, you know, uh, just in case, you know, because if I didn't believe in anything outside, what would it matter? You know, it would just be like a rock, you know, or anything else. I don't feel like yeah. I, I could name a rock. I don't feel like it had a name before. You know? Well, um, I hate to say it, Steve, but in the 80s, pet rocks were a really big thing. So. That's a good thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Rock. <laughs> what about that's you, funny. Matt? Um, uh, yeah, not, like Steve was saying, you know, I, I don't go out of my way to necessarily do the things that are superstitious. So if I see a ladder, I won't walk under it. Uh, I, you know, it's funny, even if I'm walking, if I see cracks or something, like I won't walk on them, like just because I don't make a conscious effort, but like, yeah, it's, I don't know. Like, it's like, okay, well, if it's there, I'll be extra safe, you know, but I don't get like freaked out by like 13 or anything like that <laughs> or like some, or black cats or anything, but I won't, I don't know if I have an umbrella and it's bad luck to open it indoors then i just won't just in the off chance that it is you know so i kind of am like that i'm not overly superstitious i don't have like a rabbit's foot especially playing on tour i know a lot of musicians have like their their one thing that they do every show just to like get hyped up is their one if they don't do it they're gonna have a bad show i don't have anything like that i kind of just you know for the most part i kind of avoid what i think could possibly be bad luck if there is any truth to that and then i just kind of live beyond that <laughs> you know <laughs> That's it. Fair. Well, pet rocks are from the 50s, apparently. What's Sorry. My bad. <laughs> I'm getting corrected on the pet rocks. <laughs> when were the pet rocks? Apparently in the 50s. Oh, so all, uh, practically the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in Back to the Future, then... <laughs> then you've got both. <laughs> Danica? I think you're the pet rock. I mean, superstition-wise... <laughs> I would say um, mine are based in being a theater person because lots of theater people are superstitious about really specific things. Um, I am not one that really believes in the Macbeth superstition, but if I'm in a theater, I avoid saying it just because there are people that I work with that are really superstitious about it. So I'll use like Mackers or Scottish flight, usually Mackers, um, um, things like whistling. You don't whistle in a theater because it used to be because that was a cue for somebody in the in the rafters to actually drop a curtain or to shift lights or whatever it was. So it was it was actually cues that were taken with whistling because it used to be sailors who were off duty were working. So 
it's it's a carried over tradition now and a superstition that you just do not whistle in a theater, period. Well, I can't whistle, period. So I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not whistling anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. But there's a lot more, but yeah. What about the ghost lamp, the ghost light? Yes, so the ghost light and um and what's funny is that so, cool. Steve, when you were on my podcast, um, because Steve was on Theater Nerd way back when that was still happening, um, hmm. we actually I talked to a bunch of different people in theater and that was one of the big ones is the ghost lamp was it's it's mostly now because if you have a completely dark theater, it's a liability if somebody comes in, say, to set up their piano or to set up in the pit. If the orchestra pit is lowered, then somebody can fall in and you get sued and just a liability, so you leave it on. But the superstition around it is that if you don't have a lamp on on stage when there's nobody else in the theater, then the spirits that still inhabit the theater take that as their cue to be on stage and that's their time. So mm -hmm. that they go, oh, well, I guess since you know there's it's just dark, that means I can just go ahead and be on stage. So leaving the ghost light on is sort of a reminder of, all right, we're, we're honoring the spirits that still inhabit the place. And we're saying, we, we're we cool with you, but we also, this is our space. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Interesting. Have yeah. you had any uh, paranormal stuff in like a theater or something you've been in? Cause that, don't they typically have a, a lot, lot of, <laughs> you know, stuff? Yeah. Was there like yeah, a, there's, a cool um, one or something that happened? There, well, for for me personally, uh, I don't know that I have that I can recall offhand. I'd have to like go back through my memory bank, but I know of people that you know they've seen people walking up in the cats um, and people in the booth. I've I've seen and heard people in booths that did not exist for sure. Um, wow. But that seems that seems a pretty common one that there's you know you know there's nobody else in that theater, but you know little ghosty what's her name is still walking around up there and you're like I love hey. ghosty what's her name <laughs> she's super sweet love her <laughs> all right well Danica why don't you ask one more question and then we'll go to the game oh let's see um <laughs> game. well I guess speaking of that um you know because ghost nation Steve you guys got to talk to the cast of Beetlejuice on Broadway <laughs> And if, if for people that haven't seen that, please check that out. It was super, super cool. Um, and we've talked about some some haunted theater stuff before. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that question. Where was oh, I going great. with that? I just want to mention it. <laughs> what was it like meeting the Broadway cast of yeah. Beetlejuice? And we will not say it two more times. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you know, uh, that show for me, uh, I saw it for the first time, I think, last September. It was just on Broadway for a few months at that point, maybe six. And uh, I, I couldn't take it. Uh, I was blown away, obviously, if anybody had seen it. Uh, and then I saw it, I think, uh, 11, 11 times in, in a, probably like a, a four or five month period. <laughs> um, and it's awesome. Anybody, I mean, sadly, it's not on Broadway and it won't be. Uh, they're possibly still looking for a new theater, but uh, it was awesome, you know, for somebody who had seen it that many times to be on that stage and talking to, you know, Carrie uh, Butler and, and, you know, it was just, uh, it was pretty in, in, insane. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, super cool. And to uh, get the soundtrack if you don't have it because it's oh, yeah. and flipping test. Massively good. It is so good. <laughs> So good. I, I feel like dead mom gets stuck in my head at least once a day. My poor husband has to hear like, hey mom, dead mom. I all the time. So good. Matt, ha have you heard the soundtrack for Beetlejuice? I haven't, okay. no. I know. I also it. I highly recommend check out the scene change because that is one of the coolest scene changes in Broadway history, I think, where really? it changes from the, the traditional house into the Beetlejuice house. It's so cool. <laughs> it is. And the sandworms, of course. All right. Uh, well, all right. We're going to go into our game right now. So this is, of course, our game of Would You Rather. So okay. am I going first, Danica? Are you? Yes. You, go first? you go first. Yeah. So here we go. This is the first Would You Rather. Would Ooh. you rather star as the villain in a horror film or star as the hero in a horror film? 
Hmm. Oh. For me, I'd say hero. I'd say hero. Yeah. Uh, Villain. Kind of going, yeah. But I can't see myself acting that way without just feeling really silly. But a hero, you can just kind of be like, yes, I'll save the day. <laughs> a villain, you have to actually create a character. And like, I don't know if I can, I don't know if that's in me. <laughs> see, I feel the opposite. I feel like I could be some kind of weird, like, villain. And I'd be goofy if I was like, oh, I'm here to save the day. Like, that would be, that wouldn't be my thing. So, <laughs> so for me, that would be awkward. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to someone and see if I can come up with a, a plot where I could be a horror villain, you know? Well, next week cool. we have Damien Leone, who is the writer and director of Terrifier. Oh, perfect. So Ooh. we'll have to pitch this whole idea, you know? Yeah, Steve if you don't mind. The hero and Maddie is the villain, of course. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, what? <laughs> all right, here's the next one. Let's do our next one. Would you rather live in the Beetlejuice house or live with the Adams family? Adam's family all day. Adam's family. Yeah, Beetlejuice is yeah. too. Even, even just watching the movie, it's like, wow, this guy's a little over the top. Like living with him, forget it. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, well, how do you feel? So for me personally, I back to what Danica was saying about like the structure of the house, like especially in the film, the way that the house is set up is so beautiful. And I just feel like I would admire all the shapes. And I feel like Beetlejuice and I would get along really well. So oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like we'd be like buddies. I don't know. Danica? Oh, I, I totally go Adam's family just oh, because okay. that it's, it's such a gorgeous gothic house. And it's, I mean, the people that live in it are awesome. <laughs> Fair. That's true. Yeah, they're not as as malicious as Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice is trying to like kill them and kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but if we're friends, though, Steve. Like, what if we're friends? <laughs> trying to like... marry a twelve year old or fourteen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Don't forget. But even the house is a you know that's really all it has going for it is Beetlejuice. The the Adams family house. You have all kinds of stuff. Tricks around every corner. Uh, cool they have a pretty cool library yeah. yeah and a baby named pubert which people were telling me i was wrong but the baby's named pubert anyway here's the <laughs> next one all right would you rather have a story about you written by rl stein or a story about you written by hp lovecraft who was i believe the inventor of cthulhu yes yes that's a great question actually yeah wow um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say R.L. Stein only because if it was written nowadays, nowadays I'm not sure how that sort of deep poetry style of writing would translate. Yeah. Could get a little, I don't know. But I'd say R.L. Stein. It paints a really cool picture, but his stuff doesn't really get that scary. I'd still go R.L. Stein. I think. Okay. Yeah, I would too. I feel like the artistic, like correct answer would be. H.P. Lovecraft, you know, <laughs> but for me personally, uh, I always had more of a connection with like Errol Stein growing up, watching Goosebumps and everything. So a little easier of a read. It would be more fun to see what he could write about me and stuff. So yeah, I think that would be, I'd probably go R.L. Stein. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Would you rather have to babysit Damien from The Omen or babysit <laughs> Reagan from The Exorcist? <laughs> oh, man. Damien. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I don't babysit. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, it. I mean, it would. For me, it would be Damien, just because on the surface he's a little less scary to look at and listen to, right? What's wrong I, with Reagan's face? She looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, she looks beautiful, <laughs> but uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that would be terrifying to be, uh, I, like, either way, you're doomed, but at least, you know, you don't have to be so scared with Damien, I guess. Yeah, Damien, you can give him some candy or something and quiet him down for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel that way when you look at him, you're kind of like, mm -hmm. you know what, I'll give you some, some chocolate, I'll give you a little something. Well, like, what do you think his stance is on candy corn? I mean... I don't know. He hates everything. So he probably it's like hates someone it. who would get down with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd go, I'd go Damien. It, it, I also don't like pea soup, and I certainly don't want it. <laughs> I, yeah. All right. Here's the next one. 
here's here's the next one. Would you rather go camping in the Blair Witch Woods or go camping in the cabin in the woods? Woods. What? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Blair Witch. Blair Witch, you said? Yeah, I can get around that. You can decipher that code. You can decide. But if you're in that cabin, I mean, there's no telling what can come for you, you know? Fair. That is, I feel like it's another one of those questions where either way you're kind of done. Like, because when you watch Blair <laughs> Witch, right? You're like, oh, this is easy. But apparently for the people in the movie, it's not because you get lost and it, you backtrack. So I feel like even Blair Witch Woods would be like, oh, that's probably, I can get through that, no problem. But you'll just die anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, Blair Witch, let's do it. Just because it's more of a nostalgia thing and stuff too. It's a fun movie. I remember when it first came out, it was supposed to be like the scariest thing ever, right? Remember all the, the vir that. not viral, but however you would call it and everything. It's That was funny. Like the way that that movie was marketed and stuff. I remember, mm -hmm. I never even saw it in theaters because I was too young, but I just remember everybody talking about it. You know, yeah, which, they uh, they went to UCF, I believe, and I think that they like rented or borrowed and returned the film equipment, if I remember correctly, to make the movie. I'm trying to wow. remember the full story, but there's also so many theories on this movie. That's a whole nother yeah live stream, like how it was <laughs> a setup to get the one girl Heather. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one. Would you rather have to dress up as a sexy chipmunk? Or dress up as a sexy roto rooter worker. <laughs> Danica was drinking last night when she wrote this one. So I, I'm just going to be very clear about that. <laughs> I still think it's hilarious. It is I, Danica. It's a good one. I'm trying to think of what the sexy versions of each of these costumes would be, you know? That's the best well, part. <laughs> there, is, there is a sexy chipmunk costume available. Unfortunately, on it is. It is oh, real I was weird. Look it up, but I'll, oh, it I'll is. Just, uh, oh, Rotor Rooter <laughs> could also get very sexy, I think, too. Yes. I mean, it's a uniform. You know, uniforms are hot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there she is, folks. And all her sexy chipmunk work. A little, a little bag. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Um, I think Rotor Rooter, just because there's a little more like, jokiness with it like why are you dressed up like a roto rooter worker you know <laughs> what's sexy about pulling crap out of a <laughs> yeah. right. i was just thinking of the other guys from ghost hunters <laughs> yeah yeah I, if, for me you know i'm afraid if i go as a sexy chipmunk people will think i'm a, a furry or i'm in you know, you know <laughs> and there's, there's nothing wrong with that but it, it you know I, it's just not attractive to and me then, and they right, also might true. think you're a sexy roto rooter worker too so both ends right. of the coin are pretty rough here you know you then they, <laughs> i'm making fun of my buddies you know I have, yeah <laughs> I don't want Jay to get mad at me and be like, hey, man, you're the faith in me. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I'll take the chance and go as a, a sexy chipmunk. Yeah. And and just, I wouldn't have a crazy head. I would hope that when they see my face, they go, like, oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, they would put John to the. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. Okay. So this is, if you're in the movie, A Quiet Place, which uh, you can't make any noise whatsoever, would you rather have to try to hold in a sneeze or quietly open a can of soda? It could be beer too, oh. but pop top. Wow. Yeah. And there's no chance of the sneeze actually going away. Yeah. You have to try to get it out somehow while holding it? No, I think you can... I mean, like, then you have to deal with that weirdness of like, oh, uh, now I have a sneeze stuck in my brain. You know that kind of thing? It's just not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not it's fun. Good. You're right. I'm trying to open soda, maybe, then. Just really slow, maybe. Tip it on its side. Oh, is wow. that a method? Okay. I don't know. I feel like it's always it. loud when you get to that last 1% of opening the can, though. You know what I'm saying? Like. When you break the metal, yeah. Yeah, you're never gonna get around that. But then again, if you're holding in a sneeze, that's just uncomfortable and terrible. So yeah, that's really good. Where are you going with Matt? I might actually. You know what? I might have to go with the can, just because I don't know how well I could hold in a, a sneeze and everything. So we'll go with the can. Okay, can it is. Hey, dual answer. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a technique you would try? Is there, or, or you just? I mean, oh. I'm thinking about just like putting it under as many things as possible and just, you know, Ooh. right? But trying to mumble it. 
dampening. But that, yeah, but you could try to do that with the sneeze too. But I mean, either way, man, that's that's gonna be tough. But yeah, I would try to dampen it as much as possible. And and you know, my well, my first approach would just be drink something that's not a can okay. in that environment. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that a third choice there? No. <laughs> all right, all right. Here's the next one. All right. Would you rather spend a night in the Hill House or in Bly Manor? Hmm. I'd say Hill House. Yeah. yeah, me too. Hill House. Yeah? I'm a Hill House, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be more interesting and scarier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a few more twists and turns, a few more mysteries in that house, I feel like. Yep. Ooh. All right, all right. Here's the next one. Would you rather wear a shirt? God, sorry. Wear a shirt made by Buffalo Bill. But eat a meal prepared by Hannibal Lecter. Wow. I may have written this one too. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd wear a weirdo. I don't want to eat a person, so I'd I'd wear the shirt. Yeah. I could yeah, wear it uh, easy, keep me warm. You know, it's like a pelt. Uh, <laughs> but like, what if, like, riddle me this? What if Hannibal was like trying vegan for the day? Like we wouldn't know that. We didn't necessarily say it was people. Ooh, oh, I see. No, I don't know. It's probably he, people. He has a really <laughs> good cook. He knows you know he's a fine. really good cook. <laughs> we never said it's not people, but it's people. Okay. <laughs> Just the shirt. I'm still going with a shirt. The shirt. Okay. Uh, I might also go with the shirt, just because. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting with with Hannibal. Right. And who doesn't like Yeah. Well, I'm right. I'm doing it. It's great. <laughs> all right, next one. Oh, this is the last one. Oh, oh yes. All right. Would oh, wow. you rather read the Babadook book or read the Necronomicon? Which of course the the Evil Dead book. Yeah. I'd say Babadook. Uh, For me. Get really? We love uh, what was that? He's just one. Like you deal with one nasty son of a gun. You yeah, read the Necronomicon, they're they're coming. They're, they have dead heights. You got all kinds of stuff you got to worry about. You know? That's there. true. But hopefully you'd have some type of hero that could help you. And I, I, maybe I'd go also, Necronomicon because if it's going to be more the vibe of the movies, I feel like that would be kind of you know you'd have a chance. Maybe you know fight it off. Babadook is just kind of. I feel like if you read that. You know, you're on your own and you're done for. You know? <laughs> Necronomicon, you could do that. You get a whole, you know, you can fight fight the the dead. That'd be cool. <laughs> With your bow and arrow. With bow and arrow and uh, <laughs> anything else we discussed earlier. What was it? Uh, a sword. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, yes. unfortunately, we've reached the end. <laughs> but before we wrap this up, is there anything you guys want to leave us with here today? Um, uh, you know, just, you know, happy Halloween. I'm glad it's Halloween time. Can't believe there's only a few more weeks left of this year, which is crazy. You know, what a, oh. what a crazy time. And just, um, you know, for me as a touring musician, just waiting for the live venues to open up and do that. But uh, in the meantime, just kind of staying busy, having fun and looking forward to Halloween. It's my favorite time of year. Yeah, buddy. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I say uh, thank you for chatting and spending an hour with us. Lots of fun as always. Maddie, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, maybe we'll do another one of these and uh, go thank them every Saturday. And of course, Halloween night, we have our uh, special two hours and that's been a lot of fun it's called reunion in hell very cool <laughs> <Yeah>. I love that <laughs> I'm, I'm incredibly interested in that uh, so I also want to mention uh, Galaxy Con on the 24th has Tony Todd and Kane Hodder who of course you mm -hmm. know Halloween icons. Next week, we have Damien Leone, once again, the writer director of Terrifier and Terrifier 2. And we also have the star of the upcoming Terrifier 2. Her name is Lauren Lavera, and she's oh, playing cool. the new leading lady. So, with that being said, happy spooky season, happy early Halloween, and we can't wait to see your sexy chipmunk costumes, both of you. Make sure to take lots of pictures. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> can't wait. And we'll see you guys. Real soon. Yeah. Be safe, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye.